Thank you, Wayne. Congratulations on the win. Um, what about that uh, turnaround in fortunes from last year to this? How has it been achieved? Well, firstly, it feels great. Um, the, the players obviously uh, are feeling very, very good with the, the performance that they put in. We talked about it being a special day, and um, you know, for a lot of reasons, George's hundredth. Um, you know, some silverware on the line, and the the option to, uh, well, sorry, the the opportunity then to to go deeper into the competition and and, and push on. So it was a special day. The weather was good, and uh, we went out there. And <coughs> You know, a bonus point win, um, you've got to be proud of the performance. Do you think English supporters have uh, any reason to uh, contest those of the first two tries? Well, I thought, firstly, from a Welsh point of view, the um, crossfield kick was a pinpoint, good skill. Um, Judgey did his job by hanging out there to give us the option, and uh, I thought it was well taken once the referee said time on. So. Look, if it was against us, we'd be having a look at ourselves and why we didn't react quicker. You made um, some fairly early substitutions and uh, they seemed to pay off. Yeah, we sort of um, had, a, had a, a plan in the midfield where Willis was going to come on um, somewhere between the sort of 40 and 50 minute mark, 45, 50 minute mark. Um, and, you know, Jonathan, it was his first game for a while and he was pretty solid, we thought, and uh, it was time to, to bring Willis in to see if we could change things up a little bit. Um, but I thought all the substitutions that came on did a, a, a fairly good job, obviously, in, in a pressure situation for most of them when they came on. Quite a surreal atmosphere to collect the Triple Crown, though, at the end, wasn't it? Yeah, and the players were joking about doing a lap for the supporters, but... Um, I'm sure there are uh, everybody in their homes and wherever they're watching the game would, uh, would be celebrating that one. And you march on Rome now. They've um, obviously Italy have been well beaten at home by Ireland. Um, a lot of people will be looking ahead already to a possible Grand Slam effort against France. Yeah, we, we've spoken briefly already about uh, the importance of, of the next game and. We'd do a lot of very good work if um, if we didn't focus on that game and that game alone, and uh, make sure that we uh, go out there and put in another solid performance, and hopefully get the points there. In which case, then yeah, the last weekend takes care of itself. Thank you, Wayne. Good luck. Thank you. Wayne, it looked like England were trying to get into Dan Bigger quite early on in the match. A few hits uh, that were perhaps borderline late. Um, what do you make of the way you dealt with that and, and rode that challenge and, and tried to stick to his game? Oh, look, it pretty much happens um, every time we, we, we play England. The, the players know each other very, very well. Dan obviously plays in the competition. You know, a 10 in any team is, is obviously one of your, your players that um, have to marshal the troops and implement a game plan. And um, Dan in the past, I suppose, they try to get under his skin a little bit. But look, he's um, been, been around long enough to deal with that, and I thought he dealt with it well. What do you make of Callum Sheedy? I mean, he's, he's come on at big moments in the game and in the last two two outings for you and he, you know, kicked those three penalties after England drew level. It really gave you some breathing space. Oh, look, I thought he was fantastic. Um, you know, after missing a couple out in, in um, Edinburgh, uh, to come on in, in that situation, as you say, um, a very tight game at that stage and, and they weren't easy kicks and all three of them he hit very, very well. And uh, I'm, look, I'm just pleased for him. and. And I thought uh, his general play was solid as well. So, um, yeah, as I said earlier, I think all the boys coming on added something to the game. Uh, just finally from you, how has is, how is George North been this week? What have you made of the way that he's managed? What, what was a really big occasion for him personally? Look, I think he's, he's handled himself uh, as, we, as we knew George would. He's taken it in his stride. He's been very humble. Um, we had a, a little video for him last night in the team room and um, that was very touching from family and, and other greats of the game, um, passing on their congratulations. Uh, and I thought again, George in the number 13 jersey put in a, a really good um, display and he's feeling comfortable in that position. So I think um, we have a couple of options for him going forward. Cheers, Wayne. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. Will here. How's it going? Good, thank you, Will. Um, talk us through your reactions at full time. You look uh, unbelievably pleased. Yeah, we were pretty pumped up when um, I think Callum kicked his third penalty and it took us out two scores. Um, and then to, to get the bonus point at the end, <clears throat> you know, obviously very, very happy. And, and happy for the players because they've put in so much work. Um, they've worked very, very hard. And, 
you know, we get to see what's going on behind the scenes and in terms of the camaraderie within the group. And I think that's shown for everybody watching that, um, you know, it would have been, a lot of people may have thought that, um, you know, 24 all England were coming strong at us. And, but our guys found another gear again and um, we're very pleased for that and pleased for the results so that um, we can keep building on that performance. Wales and years gone by have sort of made a thing of sticking in games and then coming out on the right side of them, especially in the Six Nations. Can you talk about the sort of character of your senior players who year after year seem to be able to deliver in these massive effort You know, we we talk a lot about Alan Wynn and um, and everything that is said is, is very accurate and he is um, he's been there and done it that many times and I think 22 times against England. So. You know, guys like that have messages to give during the week. Um, you know, the young guys are hanging off every word. Um, look, you know, he, he's one of many senior players that we've got in the group that um, are really stepping up and, uh, you know, behind the scenes as well, obviously in the training sessions and team meetings. So I'm very, very pleased that those guys, in particular senior players, Justin Tipperick, you know, and Toby Felletel, Dan Bigger, um, Jonathan Davies, George North, those sorts of players, you know, want to take on that role and, and share their experiences with the young guys, which is which is vitally important for us going forward. I appreciate there's lots of COVID restrictions and everything, but do you allow, with a week after this, off the guys to celebrate properly back at the hotel and mark a key victory in this campaign? No, no, we won't be um, <clears throat> celebrating the old-fashioned way, unfortunately, um, because I think that's a great part of our sport where... Uh, you know, you, you work so hard and it, it's a brutal contest these days. The collisions are so big and, you know, to, to then go and be able to sit down and just have a, a cold beer or a glass of wine with your mates is uh, it's important. But um, certainly uh, they'll have a couple now, but um, then it'll be uh, just spanning with them a couple of days off and they'll head home. Uh, but they're back in again next week, um, ready to do some more hard work. Just lastly, um how do you keep a lid on the sort of expectations and the nation's going to kind of go into the overdrive with more to come? I mean, how are you going to keep a lid on all that expectation? Well, I think um, because, you know, we haven't played the house down over 80 minutes yet, and I think um, everybody can see that we're building and improving, uh, but we've <clears throat> well and truly got our feet on the ground and the players have talked about that already in the change room around. Uh, you know, the next game is the most important game, obviously, because uh, it would undo all this good work. So, look, we'll be working really, really hard and we'll be looking at the Italians and doing our normal um, reviewing and, and of our performance and previewing them. And we're going to make sure we put out a side that um, can not only uh, get a result, but get a good performance, which is ultimately what we're after. Wayne, uh, I know it's not about you, but how do you feel personally in terms of relief, satisfaction? It, it was a difficult autumn, wasn't it? Some fans were calling for you to go. I mean, how satisfying is this? How good a feeling is this to have won three out of three and beaten England? Obviously, it's very satisfying, but, um, you know, we, we have to stay focused on our jobs and what we're doing. And, <clears throat> you know, we chose to, and well documented, chose to, to go down the, a bit of a development route uh, and build some some depth in certain positions in the autumn. It was a free hit, really, from our point of view. And so long as our board's across what we're doing, and you know the public will, will get on board once we, we start getting results. We know that. Um, and for me personally, you know, I, I, honestly, it's about the players and it's about us providing an environment where they can come in and get the job done, really, and keep improving. And hopefully, we're doing that. And, and hopefully, everybody's seeing that the uh, the hard work is starting to pay off. But um, you know, there's still two big games to go. And on Sheedy, did he come on as a tactical decision? Well, I think everybody got a lot of confidence, including the player, out of what happened in, in Murrayfield. So um, it was really a wait and see how things uh, progressed in this particular game. Dan took a couple of um, knocks uh, and he clearly wasn't 100. So when he took his last knock, which was on the forearm, uh, he took one on the hip as well. So uh, he wasn't uh, moving that freely, so it was time to bring him off. He's putting his hand up for a start, isn't he? Look, he's doing everything that we're asking of him and um, he's enjoying being in the environment and, and uh, he did say, listen, I can play 15, wing, 13, whatever. So, look, he's just a young guy that's um, really uh, enjoying the environment. He's expressing himself and he's doing very, very well. So, yeah, certainly uh, along with a lot of other players and that's what we want. We want competition for positions and we want to have uh, a selection headache every week, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you.
when given the number of penalties that you conceded and, and the Marito Marito JK point five, were, were you expecting yellow card at any point? Yes, um, and probably before half time on the fourth one, but. Um, you know, um, at the end of the day, uh, the referees probably didn't think they were all in the same area, maybe. Um, but look, that, that is a lot of penalties for one player. And um, he's pushing the boundaries clearly, but uh, he's a world-class player. Sometimes world-class players get a lot, uh, away with a little bit more than others.